Hey guys, it's Gracie from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with Eliato. How are you? I'm good, and yourself? Good, thanks. Getting into the questions, what made you want to get into music? Um, well, both of my parents are musicians, so it was always just kind of something made available to me. There's instruments scattered all over the house. I can count a piano, a cello, a, an accordion right now. Like, that's just in my vision. Um, so I've always just naturally picked up any instrument I could find and fiddled with it, you know? Yeah, you've obviously been in music for a while now. Do you have a favorite musical memory? Um, not specifically, but I did really enjoy as a kid. My parents dragged me out to East Cooley sometimes for their gigs. And that was always something that I found really enjoyable, just being able to play at the park and listen to their music. Um, what has it been like for you starting out in the music industry? Because I know it can be competitive sometimes. I'm really not in it for the competition. I just, I'm happy that my music is being heard and I'm happy that I'm able to express something that's maybe not as mainstream as people might expect nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you tend to find inspiration for your music? Um, a lot of the time it's through SoundCloud and obscure like music websites and um, a, a lot of like tapes from uh, thrift stores and stuff that I've found. And Do you I have I've like a favorite tape? <laughs> um, probably the one that I made myself. It's got half of Humans, like the Humans album by Gorillaz on it. And then it's got like two OMFG songs, I think like 40 seconds of REM and then like silence. Perfect. <laughs> I made it in seventh grade. Really? Do you still have it? Um, yeah, I think so. It's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just released the remix of Sugar Crash, and it was also your first release of the year. How are you feeling about that? I'm crazy stoked. I think Curtis Waters and Kim Petras added a lot to it, like energy wise, and it, it just sounds so fresh and new. I think it's an entirely new spin on Sugar Crash. And I feel like people are going to be less sick of it because of this remix. Yeah, I hear it everywhere. It's such a great song. Um, what was it like collaborating during COVID? Um, well, I mean, you can't really be face to face and like talk at any time about what either of you want. So it was kind of just my team reached out to me and said, hey, these people really want to collaborate with you. Uh, what are your thoughts? And I was just like, yeah, OK. And then they, they sent back this file and I was expecting it to be like nothing special. And my mind was just blown. It was crazy good. I had like got goosebumps. I'm so proud of Kim and Curtis. I am like, yeah, I think it's, it's just a great record. Yeah. I know that you have said that you didn't expect your song to go as viral as it did. What was that like watching it blow up and still watching the numbers go up? absolutely surreal it's taken this long to like actually hit me and get me to realize that people are enjoying my stuff when it first happened I just wasn't even processing it just like I was completely euphoric people people are listening to me you know did you have like a key moment where you're like wow this is actually happening Yes, I did. I was standing on the train platform on the way to my girlfriend's house. And no, I haven't bought a fancy car yet. I still take the train. Um, and I was just I was just refreshing my feed on TikTok and the likes and the comments kept coming in. And I was just like becoming like more and more shocked at how much like love and hate and everything else I was getting just all the attention. And I was like, this is going to be big. This is going to be really big. Yeah, I mean, how do you deal with any hate that you get on TikTok? <laughs> I think it's, I'm, most of it is really funny and I just laugh at it. But yeah. um, I mean, there's a lot of people that are really transphobic out there that just don't like me because I'm trans and successful. And to them, like, I, whatever. 
I'm I happy. I mean, you're still and getting the stream, so it works. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um do you have any future projects that you could talk about or hint at uh yes i am working very hard right now on an ep i've got like four songs like in in the demo like stage i'm really working hard to get something done because i think we're going to be releasing one song at a time to sort of keep everybody's like uh thirsts for music quenched <laughs> that's a good yeah, way to I'm, put it I'm very um, excited. This is more of a fun question for you, but if you could describe yourself and your music in three words, what do you think they would be? Oh, um, uh, diverse, um, authentic. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, uh, yeah, I'll say it, gritty, gritty. <laughs> is there a reason for those choices? Well, I mean, I do a lot of genres. I'm anywhere from folk punk to um, like super early internet sounding happy hardcore. So there's a lot of diversity in there. Authentic because um, I don't like to make up stories. I just like telling the truth through, through my lyrics. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't really brag about being a gangsta or whatever I just talk about like how I want to take a bath later you know <laughs> people still love it yeah yeah and gritty because um I mean I'm, I'm making it all on this like this like relatively cheap mic that we got on Kijiji well I mean I'm not cheap but like it's a blue yeti um yeah and and just like my my desktop so yeah uh, for your future, do you have any dream collaborations? Okay, okay. I really <laughs> hope that they're not watching because if they see this and hit me up, I will, like, my my frail little heart will, like, I'll die. Uh, I would love to work with, like, Hunna Gex one day. I would love to work with Kid Trash or Dorian Electra, which I'm actually, I'm actually working with them right now. I forgot. I'm so excited. Um I would love to um, look into maybe working with, um, I, I don't actually know if he still does music, but somebody bigger like Skrillex. Yeah. <laughs> because I just like grew up with that and I think it would be really funny. Yeah. I mean, speaking of other artists, do you have a favorite song at the moment? Um. Okay, this is weird. Minor Swing by Django Reynard. Like that old swing music I just I dig that that's my favorite song <laughs> um my last question for you our website is all about up and coming artists do you have anyone that you have your eye on that you would recommend to others um yes yes these people aren't very big but they are very good I would recommend checking out Jadex he is very talented and I really enjoy working with him um that's J. A D D E X and um, um, Selkie Girl is another like big, I wouldn't say hyper pop, but it's like on the brink of hyper pop artist. Like she's very obscure and her music is just authentic and trans and like ethereal. And it's, it's just like there's a sense of something greater within her music that I, I really want to share with the world. So definitely check out those guys. We will definitely check them out. Thank you so much for doing this interview. It was so nice to talk to you. Our blog loves you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.